December Solstice Observations Flat Earth and Globe Earth Part 3 Path of the Sun This is the third and final video of our December Solstice video series. All you'll need is a shadow stick sundial. Do you need to do this exactly on the December Solstice? No. It'll simply give the best results on the December solstice, but you can do this any day after the September equinox and before the March equinox. The closer to the, to the December solstice, the better. Preparation and tools. You'll just need a shadow stick sundial. So you can take a pizza box, maybe some clay, a toothpick, or a piece of uncooked spaghetti. And if you take a sheet of paper, stick it on the top of the pizza box, and then jam in a toothpick, maybe stabilize it with some clay, you've got yourself a shadow stick sundial. Now, I will caution you that the, sh the, the toothpick or the uncooked spaghetti, that's called the gnomon. That's the thing that's going to cast the shadows. That does not need to be very tall. This is sort of an exaggerated diagram. Or you could take a finishing nail, pound it into a sheet of plywood, uh, leave it sticking out partway, and use that as your shadow stick sundial. What's really important is that the base of your shadow stick is level and you also do not disturb it for the entire day. So if you've got kids running around or dogs, um, please make sure that they do not disturb this, uh, this apparatus. It really needs to be very stable for the entire day. So making careful observations. You're gonna do it once per hour, every hour, from sunrise to sunset. I like to mark the actual time that I record the observation, just in case you wanna come back later and, and perform an analysis uh, with the times. Um, and so you're going to have a pattern of shadows. So as you mark the, these, uh, these shadows, you're going to get a pattern. And that's really what we're going to analyze. So is it a globe earth? Is it a flat earth? Let's take a look. In the globe earth model, in the December solstice, the North Pole is tilted away at 23.4 degrees. That means that the sun is more directly shining on the, the Tropic of Capricorn, which is the southern tropic south of the equator. On the flat earth model, the sun is circling the north pole, but it is doing so above the tropic of Capricorn. So we're going to start up by analyzing the flat earth model and you don't, you really can pick any map or model you, you'd like. In fact, you don't even have, have to have a map. The only requirement is that the sun circles the north pole and that's true in most flat earth models. So we're going to do a four part analysis. Uh, for both Flat Earth and Globe Earth, we're going to first do a geometric analysis and then follow that up with a miniature model to see uh, how, how our predictions stack up. So, Part A, Geometric Analysis of the Flat Earth. On the Flat Earth model, the Sun follows a circle above the Tropic of Capricorn, circling the North Pole, and the Sun elevation is not important. So again, the Sun is in a parallel plane to the plane of the Earth. Now this is important because in geometry parallel lines make proportional shapes. If you have two lines and they cross at that red dot, you make parallel or you make proportional triangles. Parallel planes do the same thing. They will also make proportional shapes. So where all those lines cross, we're going to have that be the tip of the gnomon. So for example, we have the sun's path and we have a faithful representation of that sun's path uh, on the base of our shadow stick sundial. The analogy here is that of a pinhole camera. If you have uh, something that we're focusing on, in this case the path of the sun, and the aperture of the pinhole camera is the tip of the gnomon. The film of the pinhole camera is the, basically the base of our sundial, our shadow stick sundial, where we're marking our shadows. So here's the predicted pattern of shadows. This is in the northern hemisphere, so the sun is at our backs. Uh, the sun is in the sky uh, slightly less than half of the half of the day because it's the, the northern hemisphere's um, start of their winter. And it's, uh, it's a, it represents a circular shape because it's faithfully reproducing the path of the sun in the sky. Now in the southern hemisphere, it's the first day of their summer. So the sun is up uh, for, for much longer um, in the sky. In fact, it's the longest day of the year on the actual uh, December solstice. And again, we're facing north, but in the southern hemisphere, the sun is in their northern sky. So uh, the gnomon is actually in, in front of us. And again, the pattern of shadows is still circular or a portion of a circle. So here are the flat earth math predictions. So when facing north, the pattern of shadows will be semicircular or a portion of a circle. And it'll also be in a frowny face. In other words, it's going to be curving downwards as we face north. So let's do part B, miniature model for the flat earth. So 
I'm going to use a Gleason's map, but the disclaimer is that the Gleason's map isn't necessarily the flat Earth map. Uh, but that doesn't, that's not really important. All we need is that the sun circles the North Pole over a flat Earth, and it does so over the Tropic of Capricorn. So I've got a little card. I've got a poster-sized Gleason's map, and I just took a little uh, book light, a little LED book light, and the yellow marks mark the equator, so I'm going to trace above the Tropic of Capricorn. So again, I'm going to mark a shadow, and I'm going to have a series of uh, of shadow series of marks and I did it every two hours um, and I marked it with a W because it's the northern hemisphere's winter but it really is the December solstice. Now I repeated the process with the equinox and also the June solstice and you see something very interesting. First off in the southern um, in the summer uh, solstice the the June solstice the when the sun is tracing above the tropic of cancer it is a smaller radius and then the equinox when it's tracing above the equator it's a medium-sized radius so this perfectly uh, matches what we would expect uh, from geometry so to summarize in the flat earth model when we face north we will we will have a semi-circular pattern of shadows uh, mark which is a, a frowny face pattern it's a uh, curving downwards so let's do part c the geometric analysis for the globe earth model now again, in the globe Earth, looking down at the North Pole, the sun is 93 million miles away. And when the Earth is rotating, the, the sun appears to move in the sky. The sun is not actually moving. Uh, it's the Earth that's rotating. So it's actually an, an illusion. Now, because of the scale, because the sun is so much bigger than the, the Earth, um, when the Earth is rotating, the Earth is essentially just a dot. So the sun is going to be... Uh, tracing a circle with the Earth at the center. All right, and in the globe Earth model, the the Earth is simply just a just a dot compared to the Sun. So these uh, yellow and white ovals represent the circular path of the Sun. Part of it is above the horizon, part of it's below. But we're going to focus in on on the the December twenty first uh, solstice. So again, this is the northern hemisphere. The Sun is in the southern sky, and it's it's only a uh, above the, the sky a little bit because it's the start of winter. So here we're going to be focusing on the green path of the sun. Uh, so we have our gnomon. It's going to be casting a shadow, and we're marking the path of shadows also in green uh, on the base. So I found a little diagram on the, um, on the web, um, and it really perfectly matches uh, what, what we're expecting. So on the winter solstice, um, it, it's got that, that curve to it. So what shape will the path of shadows take if we face north from both hemispheres? So we really want to keep this thing consistent. So in the southern hemisphere, it's their summer solstice. Uh, in the northern hemisphere, it's our winter solstice. But we want to face north in both, in both cases. So here's the northern hemisphere. It's the start of winter. We're facing north. So the, the sun is to our rear. And you can see the gnomon is marked there in the bottom of the diagram. And so it's a hyperbolic pattern because it really is a conic section. If the sun is tracing a circle in the sky and we are intersecting um, a cone because the, the gnomon is like the tip of the cone, uh, we're going to get a, 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 hype, a hyperbola. But in the southern hemisphere, December is the start of summer. Again, we're facing north. Uh, the sun is in front of us, so the gnomon is in front of us. And please notice that the curve is a tighter curve uh, because the shadows are shorter because the sun is higher up in the sky. So again, to summarize, when we're facing north, uh, it doesn't matter if we're in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. It doesn't matter if it's winter or summer. When we're facing north, the December solstice will be a hyperbola. Um, so here are our predictions. Facing north, the pattern of shadows will be a, a hyperbolic or a conic section, and it'll be in a smiley face, or it'll be curving upwards. So lastly, let's take a look at part D, which is a miniature model of the globe Earth. So I took an actual globe, a desktop globe, um, where the North Pole is tilted at uh, 23.4 degrees, and I had it tilt away from the... Um, the sun that was simulated by a flashlight. I used a little index card and, and just like a quarter toothpick. I mean, I, I found that the, the longer the toothpick was, the shadows didn't even stay on the card. So really, sh a shorter gnomon is, is, is better. And then I, I rotated the globe and I marked the shadows. And it was not very perfect because this was a very flimsy index card and 
I, I had trouble marking the shadows without without bumping the card. So so my marks are not are not going to be as precise as your marks are in the real world. But anyway, here's the final pattern of of marks on my uh, shadow stick sundial simulated by the the globe model. And again, uh, it is a hyperbolic pattern of shadows as predicted by mathematics and geometry. So here are our final summary uh, conclusions. If you are marking the pattern of shadows, when you face north on the flat earth model, it will mirror the path of the sun being a semicircular or a portion of a circle and it will be a frowny face um, curving downwards. On the globe earth model, it will be a conic section pattern or a hyperbola and it will be a smiley face pattern curving upwards. So how did your uh, pattern of shadows uh, result? You, YouTube user Kara Diane has created message boards uh, and you can share your results. So you can share your location and your pattern of shadows. Um, take a picture and what I like to do is mark where north is. So if you do take a photograph of your uh, shadow stick, make sure you mark where north is, uh, is facing so that people can take a look at your photo later. Please remember what Morrissey uh, recommends. Uh, it's so easy to be uh, it's so easy to hate, but it does take strength to be gentle and kind. Thank you.